We are here at ABN Embro, and we're going to also be at the headquarters. This is the most sustainable building after the fact. They've basically reformed as the building, and then in front of us, we have Circle. That's the most sustainable banking. The bank, the ABN Embro, is really becoming green. They really are very serious to go in that direction. And uh, Edwin van Bommel is the CIO. That's, of course, the Chief Inf uh, Innovation Officer. I know him from the time that he was at McKinsey, and he did a startup in AI in... Uh, I think New York it was, yeah, New York. So he's our host, he basically just got the job and they said, hey, we want to do a conference here. And he says, sure, that's a great idea. So he's our host and he basically together um, with the team of ABN Ambro, they support us here. So I'm really happy about that. So give him a big hand for Edwin van Bommel. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, is there also a blockchain to do a time warp so that we can set back the time a bit? Or yeah. that's uh <laughs> but good. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit more about what we're actually doing on um, on uh, blockchain within uh, ABN Amro, and then also in the context of uh, banking uh, for uh, for better um, within Group Innovation, which I which I lead. Uh, we actually have uh, three values, but one of them is that we have a purpose-led uh, uh, focus, and, but the key theorem in that is also uh, focus. And to explain a bit more on how that works, I first want to introduce you to um, our mission statement of, uh, of ABN AMRO, which is banking for better for generations uh, to come. And uh, you already heard about um, this building and about uh, Circle, but this mission statement is actually much uh, broader. And there are three very important pillars underneath that one. And the first one, is we are very focused on helping our clients actually uh, to become leaders in the sustainability shift. And this is also why we show by example, for instance, with this, uh, with this uh, building. The second one is uh, reinvent customer experience, where we are focusing on further enabling our clients actually in working with us and making it significantly more easy. And then the third one is a future-proof bank, which is a lot about more the underlying processes we have within the bank. So, for instance, uh, we're in the midst of a DevOps transition, um, and that's part of this, uh, of this uh, pillar. When I talk about blockchain and the blockchain initiatives, currently most of them are focusing on the reinvent uh, pillar. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is mainly um, that part of, of what we do. But since um, sustainability is very close to the heart, let me also elaborate a bit more on what we do. And, Funny thing is when we were debating also, um, uh, yesterday we had the opening dinner for all the speakers uh, in, in Circle, and we had a debate about, okay, blockchain, um, sustainability, how does it, does it actually compute? And one of, uh, one of the folks in my team actually said, well, but if you uh, look at uh, Bitcoin and the energy consumption of Bitcoin, um, if Bitcoin would be a country, it would be number 66 on the list of 195 uh, countries in terms of energy consumption. So actually, it doesn't really match with sustainability. Now, the good thing is we focus more on the blockchain where people know each other, where people trust each other, so we don't need all these complex energy consuming algorithms uh, to run what, uh, what we do. But if I look to the sustainability portfolio, which we are doing, so we're working, for instance, on a materials bank where you can register. So all the materials we have used here in Circle are registered. And uh, we actually think about many of these initiatives and we believe to scale them that for some of them actually would need something like a blockchain as well. So we're more and more actually also putting attention on how to leverage a blockchain uh, for the innovations we do on uh, sustainability. But for now, it's, uh, it's mostly about uh, the customer experience. And if you look at what happens, right, and you read a lot about open banking, uh, PSD2, et cetera, but in general, if you look at the world, in the old days when you had to work with the bank, for instance, with us, yet to come for the, to us, uh, and still this is largely the case, work with our processes, work with our standards, well, actually most of your business or most of the things you were doing were taken outside of that ecosystem. And what we're now doing is that we actually are in that transition to be much more in those ecosystems, integrated in there, and we'll tell a bit more about it later, and provide the banking services in that and become more an integral part of the ecosystem so that it's easier actually to, to work with us and that it's easier for you to actually do uh, business, uh, for instance. So for us, that is uh, extremely important. Now, obviously we are a bank and in what we do, a lot of trust is involved and typically we are involved in processes where many parties are involved. And especially in those um, ecosystems, 
obviously blockchain is a great technology. So when you look at our focus, we focus on the customer experience and we focus on those situations where we are a part of integral chains where trust is a big thing. Now, end of last year, so I joined by, uh, I joined uh, October 1st uh, last year and around December, January, we had a discussion, okay, where will we focus on with, um, with the DLT? And we actually looked at sort of the areas which you see at, um, at, the, at this uh, picture. And in the end, we said, we'll keep a close eye on many of these things and we will keep on doing all kinds of experiments and small things on many of what you see on this page. But the core focus for now will be trade finance. And why is that? Logic is extremely simple. First of all, we are one of the global leaders in trade finance. It's an important business line and we are a leader so we can also there really create a movement. The second thing is, it is typically a global situation with many parties involved, right? There's producers, there's traders, there's banks, uh, there's transporters, many parties, and trust typically is an issue because not everyone knows each other. So great for blockchain. And then thirdly, it is a process which is incredibly manual, a lot of paper-based, so really also a way to go with automation, right? So a lot of uh, gain, not only for us, but especially for uh, our clients. So this was the focus uh, we decided uh, early this year. And then uh, in March, uh, we actually went uh, to the Valley together with the Blockchain Coalition with uh, Marlouz, uh, who's sitting in the back. Um, and one of the core questions I still had when I was flying there was, okay, but is this not really the right focus? Or is it true that there's something like a blockchain winter? And actually, are we, is it still a solution looking for a problem? Now, we met many different institutions there, cloud providers, uh, VCs, um, obviously quite a few startups. And when I came back, people asked me, okay, Edwin, is there now a blockchain winter? And it was hard to say yes or no. And I said, probably it's one of the best Dutch winters you could have, right? Which is the sun is shining, it's freezing a lot, we can ice skate, enjoy life, while the bugs and other stuff are getting killed because it's so cold, so spring will be nice as well. And that's sort of what, is, what was happening. So what we actually saw was that the amount of money investors are putting in blockchain is still, was still increasing in 2018, and in the first quarter, the expectation was still that the increase would continue in 2019, which is very good news. But what we also learned is that the investors were getting way more picky about what to put their money on. So a lot of the investments in all kinds of crazy things which were not scalable or just stupid ideas, actually the money was retracted from that and being put much more focused on things like still crypto and tokenization, a lot of trade. I met a lot of investors actually who are focusing on, on trade and with identity also coming up. Right? So from that perspective, not really a winter, but just a major uh, refocus where actually this area was one of the things uh, which was uh, picked there as well. So what I said, we, we focus on uh, more, uh, more areas, but this is the core for us. And this is when you talk about production, the production this is the stuff we want to bring into uh, production. And um, we have Deliver, which is focusing more on the container trade, and then Vakongo, which is focusing on commodity uh, trade, where Vakt is more the platform for the oil, and then Comgo is the platform more for the trade finance products. And we work really here in ecosystems. So on Deliver, it's with the port of Rotterdam or with Samsung Logistics. And in fact, Comgo, you have the oil majors like uh, Shell, uh, Chevron, BP, um, all the major banks here from Holland, uh, but also B, uh, BNP and uh, Citibank, for instance. And I'm not going to tell much more in detail about these because in the spirit of partnership and in the spirit of ecosystem, Actually, our partners will talk about this, and that makes me very proud because I think this is sort of the way it should be, that we actually work together and we can all present and represent these, uh, these initiatives. So I'm very actually proud to have Deliver Fact in Congo all here on this uh, stage. So taking a step back, for us, blockchain is very important. For us, blockchain, we really try to focus for now on customer experience and within that a lot on trade. Um, I expect that sustainability will be the next thing we're actually going uh, to look at. And I wish you all a very great conference uh, for today. Thank you.
Ah, here you are. Before you uh, disappear. Yes. Um, you look at a lot of different technologies, right? The, the hype cycle, you look at everything. Yep. What phase is the technology? What phase is the, uh, is, the, is the tools? And what phase are the institutions? Because you do complex things with, uh, with blockchain. Um, I think if you look at the technology, uh, honestly, when I was uh, in my previous job working in New York, I actually did not work a lot with, uh, with uh, blockchain. So for me, when I came here, I was working with the team. To my surprise, the technology was way more mature than I expected more as an outsider. So I was positively surprised. And if you look, for instance, at the speed we could set up, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Deliver and also Vart, that was for me a positive surprise. And it's partially the technology, uh, but I also am a strong believer in the type of technological people who are working on the technology because they're very network oriented, they're very collaborative oriented. Mm -hmm. yeah, the which culture, brings the culture, the culture the around this world, technology yeah. is actually awesome. So th that is for me, I think, where, where it's at. If you then look at where do the institutions stand, it depends a lot on the institutions, uh, but I heard a lot of, of blockchain winter when I sort of was discovering <laughs> what is going on there. Yeah. I think now with the first production successes, that changes a lot. And if I also compare that to AI, when I started in AI, it was very early, and as soon as you have the first public statements on impact, like you just showed with Ping On, like you will hear now, yeah. I think that mindset can change quite, uh, quite fast. People are just looking for... Uh, is it working? Is there a business case, right? And is it is it stable? Okay. We have some, some question more of the audience. What about KYC and AML? You know, we just talked about the two percent of the two percent of the two percent in the current world. Uh, how do you see that uh, develop uh, the, the legislation the developing? Uh, will that kill a lot of these projects? Because the thinking, I mean, your your stuff, your 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 blockchain trading stuff does five hundred million, a billion. It's nothing. Uh, are you afraid that legislation will be brutal uh, in, that, uh, in, that, uh, in that field? Um, I, I think also the regulators are currently uh, seeing uh, the shift which is, which is happening. And right, they're also, I think, in discussions, for instance, a lot with us to see, OK, what can we do and can we not do? So for now, it's actually uh, quite a good uh, dialogue. And I think it's actually fine to be also careful because there are certainly also uh, quite a few uh, risks. Secondly, if you look at... Um, um, the KYC and these other things, yeah. um, honestly, the 2% of 2% of 2% of 2%, right? It is a lot of uh, work. manual work and a lot of work. If where the major relief will come from, if, it, if it's AI or blockchain, it probably it's a combination of the two, I, I, I guess, where the solution must, uh, must lie. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot more questions, because this guy is really interesting. He worked at McKinsey, then he worked at a startup, <laughs> now he's doing the uh, innovation at a bank. I mean, it's really... And I think, I think ABNM is really accelerating in terms of new projects. It's yeah. really, uh, I mean, there is a whole new dynamic, and you work together with lots of different companies, small companies, big companies. Is it, is it a big change to go from a startup and then a huge McKinsey and then startup and then here at the bank? Um, yeah, for, for me, actually, the, the biggest change was to work more from a New York culture again into the Dutch culture and then get it. I worked in McKinsey for 16 years, mainly in banking, so I was actually quite used to banking culture. It was more uh, settling back here in the country was, <laughs> was the bigger thing. Okay. Yeah. Edwin, thank Thanks. you very much yeah. for supporting him. Give him a big hand. Thank you. If you have questions for him.